In the next two lectures, we're going to cover how to create your own data frames and then how to save them out. These are both fairly simple topics in and of themselves. The only reason they're separate lectures is because it turns out there's a whole bunch of different ways to do each of those objectives. As you can see, all we're going to need for this section is pandas and good old numpy. This will be, hopefully, very straightforward, and if you're already familiar with how to do this and you're comfortable with it, feel free to skip ahead. Alright, the first way of creating a data frame is one you've seen before, super easy. You go directly from a numpy array. So if we go numpy.random.random and we just ask for, let's say, size, so five rows, three columns, uh, we'll print the data so you can see what that looks like, just like you'd expect, and then go data frame is equal to pd.data frame. You can then say data equals data. You can just pass in data without specifying the keyword, that's fine. And then we'll just say that columns is equal to a... We're being very inventive here, as you can see, A, B, C, and then we'll just have a look at the data frame, exactly what you'd expect. All right, there's another way that we can do it, of course, and let's just say data frame is equal to PD dot data frame. I'm just going to copy this because we're going to be typing this out a lot. And we can say data is equal to, and now pass in a dictionary where you can specify this is column A and the data is one, two, three. You can say, hey, we've got column B, and this doesn't have to be numeric, right? It could be names, my name my sister's name, and then good old Johnny boy. We do that, whoops, and just have a look at DF. You can see it's exactly what you'd expect. Perfect. So data frame by array done, data frame by dictionary done, but what if you have a NumPy structured array? Uh, that's also easy to do, so let's just make a structured array. We'll say the D type, we'll say we have column A and it's a NumPy int, and then we'll say we have column B and it's a NumPy dot string, uh, but wait, strings, you need to specify on numpy dot string, how long they can be, so 20 should be good enough, that's a valid D type, and then we'll say, you know, our data is equal to numpy array, and uh, we'll pass in this, so we'll just regurgitate what's up above, one Sam, two Alex, and then we'll go and we specify the D type is equal to D type, and that should give us a nice structured array. Okay, it works. Uh, we can double check that. Perfect, looks great. We can just say here, df is equal to pd dot data frame. Oh, I copied that, didn't I? What a fool. And just directly pass the data straight in. You don't need to do anything else. It will be done. It will infer the types from the restructured array, and everything will just work. Now, we, we covered dictionaries before up here, but note that this is a dictionary where it's specified a column and then all the rows in that column. You can use a dictionary method and go row by row. It's not very common, but just to be complete, I'll cover it here. So let's say you have an array, and in this one we have A is equal to one, and then B is equal to Sam. So you can see we're just regurgitating this information, but in dictionary format. So let me just write it all out. And once we have all of that done, same thing, df.dataframe, and we'll pass in data and then just have a look. You see, it's perfect. As a final note, you'll see that the index that's being assigned when you create the data frame is just your normal integer count up from zero. It's the array index that's being used as the data frame index. You can specify this, you can change that. This doesn't even have to be a number, by the way. Commonly when you have date time sort of things, sort of things, date time structures like stock market price histories, this will actually, the index will be the date time of the price, of the actual record. So you can make this whatever you want. We're going to cover that in enormous detail later on in the course. But just so you know, you can specify the index up here when you're creating the data frame. We'll get onto that a bit later. So 99% of the time when you're creating a data frame, I would generally use either this method here coming straight from an array or coming here using the dictionary with the entire columns. I have literally never used these in my life, uh, but if I get the code, I know what it does and you will now too. Uh, so let's just jump into how you can save out any of these data frames that you've created yourself.